Okay. Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. It is good to be with you this week. It is good to be with you this week. We're going to study Acts. We're going to stay in Acts. We're going to be reading uh, out of chapter 16. So do you remember what we studied last week? We talked about Paul's missionary journeys, but where were you? Well, I was in Texas. And so now we're going to talk about the missionary journey. Paul's trip are very important. That's why we learn about them. Many of the books in the New Testament were written by Paul to people that he visited on his missionary trips. And he wrote letters to support them and to teach them after he had left. Today we're going to talk about Paul and Silas going to a country called Macedonia. Is that where the nuts come from? No, that's macadamia. Oh, okay. We like those nuts. Though. We do, we do. Today we will talk about Paul and his vision that he received at night. And if you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about God often spoke to man uh, in the Old Testament and somewhat in the New Testament through visions. Now, Paul had a vision of a man in from Macedonia waving to him and asking him to come and help because Paul's plan was to go to Asia. But God had a different plan, and Paul was always listening to the direction God would send him through the Holy Spirit. Very good. So before we dive into the story a little bit deeper, could you please lead us in prayer? Yes. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the time that we have to come and share with our young people. We are looking forward to the time that we'll be able to put our arms around them, hug them, and let them know how much they mean to each, to Julia and I. Absolutely. But we ask that you put your protection around them, especially in these difficult days. There is so much going on in our country. It could easily overwhelm people and how they feel. We just ask that you strengthen their spirit. Give them the confidence that you are always with them. No matter what is going on in the world, you will be there to see them through it if they just ask and lean on you. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In Acts 16.6, we read the following. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of deviation met us who brought her master much profit by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Well, what, what, what kind of spirit was possessing the girl? This was an evil spirit. It was one that said that they could tell the future. Well, what was evil about the spirit telling people either about their futures or that it, it could tell the future? Well, as God has told us many times throughout the Bible, he is the only one who knows the future. It is not for people to determine what the future is. Only God can do that. And people who say they can tell your fortune or tell you what's going to happen next year or the year after, mm -hmm. they're not being honest. And actually, they're telling lies. They're making up the stories. So we as Christians need to know that we should live our lives only trusting in the Lord. And the Lord will lead us in the direction he wants our life to go. So you're, you're kind of saying that only God knows the future. 
That's correct. Only God knows the future. Nobody else. Okay, so I'm going to keep reading in verses 20 to 24. And they... I beg your pardon. I'm going to read from verses 19 to 24. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach us customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet, their feet in stocks. Paul and Silas sat in their jail cells. What did they do? Well, when they were put into the jail cells, the, their jailers made sure that they were in the innermost area of the jail and that they were secure, they had their feet tied by chains. And so they were, they were very, very tightly secured and they, they praised, they sang and they worshiped and, and they praised. They were secure, they knew they were doing God's work and they knew that God would see them through this difficult time. That, that is true and they, and they knew that even though they were accused by other people and they had to go in front of a judge, they were accused of doing things that, that they simply did not do. How would you, how should we react if someone says that we did something we didn't do? Well, we should trust in the Lord. And it, just in all things that we do, we should trust in the Lord. That, that he would give us the words that he would have us say. And if he asked, he, if he would have us to explain our actions, that he would give us that leading. Um, we, should, we should always follow God's way, God's word, rather than um, arguing or shouting. We certainly can explain ourselves, especially if a judge is asking us to. But arguing and shouting and pouting and having a tantrum, those are not God's ways for us. No. God's ways is to trust in him. That, that's right. That's right. And, and we know, too, that while they were in prison, they were, they were very, very uncomfortable that the judge had ordered them to be flogged. Do, do you know what flogged is? That's when they were, in this case, beaten with a rod. And they had many uh, welts, like if you get a bad blister on your hand from rubbing it too hard or hitting something hot. They had these kind of welts all over their back. They called those stripes, huh? Call them stripes, yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. And they weren't treated before they were put in prison. So they were just thrown in prison, locked, hands locked up, feet locked up, and just left there. So we can imagine their backs probably bled. They probably had blisters on them. So it was probably very painful, very uncomfortable. But they trusted in God. Would you read the next passage for us, please? The next. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors opened and every chain was loosened. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing that all the prisoners had escaped, But Paul call, uh, took out a sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and ran in 
it and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. So why, tell me again why um, Paul and Silas were in jail. What, what were they accused of doing? They were accused of destroying the temple worship and the fortune telling of uh, the owners of the slave girl. Oh. And they were accused of leading the people away from the heathen belief and leading them to Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Well, um, picking off where you left off, you said that um, the guard called for a light and he ran in. So in verse 30, it reads that he brought them out and said to them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food down before them and rejoiced, having believed in God with his whole household. So we see that in today's lesson, we really learn to trust in God. God showed Paul and Silas that he would be with them when, in, when things get difficult. And when things get difficult in our life, that's when we need to dig down deep in our faith and put our trust in God. Because God will see us through. Might not be easy. Might not be fun. But God will see us through those difficult times. And that's why Paul and Silas could rejoice being in prison, locked up against a wall, very uncomfortable, suffering from a beating. But they could rejoice because they knew they were doing God's work and God would see them through this difficult time. What? Do you think that Paul and Silas thought about running away when the earthquake took place? They may have. They, that might have been the first reaction. I mean, if you're in a building and it's made out of stone and it's starting to shake and doors are falling off and chains are falling off, you may have thought. But no, they had the faith and they kept their faith. They knew the Lord would help them and they were strong and steadfast in their faith. And that's what we need to be. And it's not always easy, but it can be done. And and not only did they have that faith, and not only did they stay there, in what might have looked like a very dangerous place, they, they also showed God's mercy. They showed great mercy, especially to the jailer and his family. I mean, the jailer was ready to kill himself because in those days, if a prisoner escaped, the jailer had to take the place of the prisoner. Oh, wow. But in this case, Paul said, don't harm yourself. We are here, and we are not going anywhere. God has us in this place at this difficult time for a reason. And that reason was to bring salvation to that jailer and his entire family. Can you imagine? Here's a jailer, probably not a nice guy back in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not. And, uh, but God's plan was that this man would become a Christian. And he used Paul and Silas, maybe in a difficult way, mm -hmm. but he accomplished what he his plan was for this man and his family. It makes me think a little bit, I mean, I think Paul and Silas being in jail and experiencing an earthquake and being accused of something that they thought they were doing God's will and doing, and they were, they were. And they, they cast that demon out of that girl. 
um, those were very difficult circumstances, but I think we can look at the circumstances that we're in right now, where we're being asked to quarantine, where we're being asked to do everything that we can to help keep the, the virus from, from spreading. And in, in some ways it's been very hard. It's, it's been very hard for most people. And I, I think that as we take this lesson and consider how faithful Paul and Silas were in much more difficult situations. It, it, it was much more difficult than what we're experiencing. And how faithful they were and how they stayed true to God and stayed, stayed safe in the, in the belief that God would protect them. I think we can learn a lot from that. I think that's a very good point. And I think another good point is God is teaching us to show mercy. Now, when the jailer was going to kill himself with, with his sword, Paul stopped him. And what Paul was doing by that act was showing mercy to the jailer and to the jailer's family, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And we have to do the same thing. We have to learn to show mercy to others who have offended us, rightly or wrongly, just the way God shows mercy to each one of us as individuals as we make mistakes we fall short of his glory and we ask for his forgiveness and he gives it willingness and we need to be able to do the same thing to our friends and people that we come in contact with in our uh, daily life it, it, it may be uncomfortable and they may have said something that really hurt you, but God teaches us to grant mercy to everyone, and we need to do that in our daily lives every day. Boy, Mr. Rudy, there's a there's a lot packed into this verse, these verses, isn't there? This lesson had a lot for us. A lot, and we're going to continue in the book of Acts, and next week, <coughs> we'll still be continuing uh, with Paul and uh, we'll probably have a couple more weeks of Paul and then we'll move on to another book but uh, Julia's going to lead us in a closing prayer and uh, our wishes and our, our our love go out to each and every one that they do Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for your faithfulness in teaching us and leading us and bringing your word alive for us in our lives. Thank you for the many blessings that you give to us. We ask that the lesson pleased you and help teach the kids. We learn from it as we do it, and for that we give great thanks and we say amen. Amen. <laughs>